Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing about keratoconus. So for we will have many parts in this video. First we will discuss what exactly keratoconus is, then what are the risk factors of keratoconus, then what are the symptoms we see in keratoconus, then how do we diagnose and how do we treat. So keratoconus actually is the disease of the cornea. So if suppose this is your eye, this is the front part of the eye which is called as cornea. It is a transparent layer which helps in focusing of light on the cornea. This is the lens and this is posterior part which is where the nerves are it is called as retina. So normally the cornea is circular in shape or dome shaped like you can see in this picture. But if it becomes cone like then it is called as keratoconus and if it becomes cone like then the focusing of light will not be so much regular or proper hence the patient will have blurring of vision. So in keratoconus disease one very common feature is blurring of vision which get improved with glasses or it might not improve fully with glasses. So the few the common symptoms which we see in keratoconus patients are blurring of vision. They will have distorted vision because the cornea is has become distorted or they might have halos, glare, they might they have they will have cylinder power and there might be increase or progressive increase in cylinder power in these patients and if these things are there then we should definitely evaluate the patient and we should do scanning so as to rule out this disease. Keratoconus is a bilateral that is it is present in both the eyes but it is asymmetric which means one eye will be involved more whereas the other eye will be less involved and because it is asymmetric one eye will be more severe and the other eye will be less in intensity. So what happens with a better eye patient actually will be able to manage their activities and hence they will not come to doctor very early. It is also a progressive disease which means as the time passes the disease increases if we do not do treatment or if we do not do anything to stop the progression. So the very common thing and very important thing in keratoconus disease is progression to know whether it is progressing or not. So for that we will do scans every 6 months and then we will see few points in those scans that the doctor will evaluate and let you know whether the disease is increasing or not and if it is increasing then we will do collagen cross-linking that is C3R for that patient. In collagen cross-linking we will put riboflavin eye drops and we will also put ultraviolet radiation which is safe in everything within safe limits will be instead will be put on patient's eye it's not exactly a surgical procedure but these things will be put on patient's eye and the eye especially means on the cornea and with that the collagen bonds between the collagen will increase and it will give strength to the cornea and hence will stop progression of the disease. Other treatments, so suppose uh, exactly to diagnose the disease, what exactly we do? We do scanning of the eye which will tell the curvature and the thickness of the eye. So if the thickness is little on the higher side, then it is a milder case. But if the thickness is less than 400 or less than 380, then it is a more of a severe case of disease. So if the thickness is more, then with collagen cross-linking, we also do surface ablation of that area and we will regularize the surface. So that the vision also improves along with collagen cross-linking. So collagen cross-linking is only for stopping the progression but it will not improve vision. For vision we again have to do something. So if the thickness is enough like if the patient has thickness above 450 or more then we will do along with collagen cross-linking we will do surface ablation or laser ablation of that area so as to regularize so that patient can see better. But if the thickness is less, suppose if the thickness is less than 350 or very less then in those cases we will do corneal transplant and that is the only treatment option available. So if the thickness is very less then in those cases we will do corneal transplant which is one of the treatment options available. Other treatment options which are available are intact. We can also do fake eye after regularizing the surface we can, we can cover the power of the lens with the help of fake eye these patients, there are a variety of contact lenses actually for these patients and which includes rigid lens, low scale lens, piggyback lenses which help in proper uh, vision and gives a clear vision to these patients. Actually rigid contact lens is something which actually helps these patients a lot. If the keratoconus is little on a severe side then scleral contact lenses are also tried. If patient cannot, is not tolerant to all these lens then those surgical options what I told earlier are something which we should consider. Thank you.